briefcase, briefs, and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. In 1976, the Supreme Court of the United States heard the case of United States v. Dinitz, which examined whether a retrial could occur after a mistrial and under what circumstances a mistrial should be called. Nathan Dinitz was accused of conspiracy to distribute LSD and had initially hired Jeffrey Meldon for his defense. However, five days before trial, Dinitz also hired Maurice Wagner to conduct his defense. On the first day of the trial, Wagner made an inflammatory comment during his opening statement, which led to the prosecutor's objection and judge warning Wagner about his behavior. Dinitz later requested a mistrial, which led to the question before the Supreme Court. Was his constitutional right not to be twice put in jeopardy violated by his retrial after his original trial ended in a mistrial granted at his request? The Court of Appeals had applied a manifest necessity standard to a mistrial motion, which, in doing so, undermined double jeopardy clause protections. The Supreme Court overturned the Court of Appeals' decision and ruled that the defendant's retrial didn't violate their constitutional protection against double jeopardy. The case was subsequently remanded for further proceedings in line with this ruling. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lsd.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.